So, this is a video that I didn't think I would be making, but I thought it would be interesting to document this. More so to look back on in general, but it's going to be very, very interesting indeed. What I'm basically talking about is I'm recording this video on the 14th of January 2021. For those who don't know, I work in the NHS and I have worked in the NHS for coming up to seven years. And as a response to me working at the NHS, I literally checked my emails on my phone earlier today after speaking to some of my colleagues. I'm getting my COVID vaccine today, or should I say part of my COVID vaccine? Because of course, depending on what vaccine you get, obviously things might change by the time you watch this video in, I don't know, September, I, I don't know. <laughs> it could all change by then. It doesn't matter what vaccine you end up getting, but you have it in two parts. You have one vaccine whenever you get it, and then you have your second vaccine, hopefully within a couple of weeks time, depending on how things are, because I know there are some things happening in the country and I may not get it in a couple of weeks. I may have to wait up to 12 weeks for my second one, but I think that's why I'm also documenting this because I thought it would be interesting to do a couple of videos talking about the before, during and after of getting the vaccine and walk you through the process of what I've experienced getting the vaccine, anything that I've felt from getting it because I don't think it's really clocked in yet. I think I got a little bit emotional at work when I read that email saying you have an appointment because it made me realize, oh God, it's real. Wow. But I don't think it's really sunk in yet and it probably won't sink in until I go to get my appointment later on this evening and to receive a vaccine itself. Specifically, at this point in time, I have no idea which vaccine I'm getting between the Pfizer vaccine and the Oxford vaccine. I do know the, there is a third one in that has been approved by the UK government, but that third one is not currently in rotation. It's just Pfizer and Oxford. That's it. This is hopefully going to be an interesting experience. I'm recording this before I go to my appointment later on. So this, I'm recording this at about quarter four. My appointment is later on this evening at five past seven. We're going to see what happens. We're going to absolutely see what happens and I'm going to update this for what happens when it happens. Let's see how things go. So I, I literally have an update and it's been no more than five minutes <laughs> since I finished recording the last bit. Effectively what's happened is uh, a little bit of backstory to this. So I work for the NHS but so does my mum and I'm still living with my parents at the moment. So what I did was I checked on my mum's email through her iPad whether she had an appointment book the same as me. Sadly, she didn't. So I thought nothing of it, but, but I thought it was a bit suspicious because we have the same surname still. Uh, I'm a D because my name's Dom, so I'm quite high on the list and her, her name begins with an S, which is quite down low. But I thought because we have the same surname, it's, it's we should be relatively at the same time, surely. She just called me, <laughs> checked her, her work email, so the email from, that's actually dug into the NHS, and they've emailed that instead. She's called them up about it because apparently her appointment was yesterday. And so now they've actually changed my mum's appointment to the same time as my appointment. Which will be very interesting. So now we'll have me and my mum doing it at the same time. We'll both see how it's going. Ooh! <laughs> you can't make it up. It's going... It's, it's going more and more crazy. And I, as I said, literally five minutes after I recorded the last bit. So hopefully I'll see you later on. We'll see how this goes and uh, have an hour about it. Share my experiences, I guess. Ooh. Okay. So when I'm filming this, it is 7.41. It's done. I've got it. I've been pricked to my arm. You're not going to see it on screen, obviously. I can't even see it either. Uh, I've done it on my left arm because my right arm's my favourable one and they said, what's your least favourable? The lefty. So, well hey, all sorted. I'm done. And it feels so weird. Now don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not expecting to go in there, get an injection and a fanfare to begin with. Yay! Hey, you got it done! <laughs> no, no. Especially with what's been happening in the world. New. But, 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 I did come with 
some bits. Uh, <laughs> and I do like having extra bits. Woo. So obviously, this is what I've been given, bearing in mind I've had the vaccine in the UK. Depending on where you have the vaccine, where you're from, things may look a bit different. You may be not be given these things. You may be given more things or different things, depending on where you go and what they do. But before I show you the things and what they've given us, I'll talk about the process of how it was done. So we had the vaccine done at a local mosque. Uh, the mosque was within about, what, not even five miles away from my house. And... It's, it, the mosque itself has been recently done up, but we actually did not go anywhere near or in that mosque whatsoever. Around the back, they had a brand new like office block building, and they had set it up. It was like a long building in the back next to the car park, and you had an usher. Where, so when you were coming into the car park, you said whether you were like an at-risk patient or an NHS worker that was there to get your vaccine done. He guided you in, advised where your best parking and then let you know, you go through the entrance and away you go. So we parked up, went in. They had a table set up where you had to give your day of birth and a, bit, a few of your other bits of information so they could find you on the little computers. I find it a little bit funny. <laughs> and by no means, I'm not making fun of the guys who were running the login system because I could tell they were having a field day with it. And by field day, I mean it was absolutely rang of their brains, which I fully understand working in a GP surgery. It happens. I couldn't help but notice one of the laptops they were using it was like as if they were using a Windows 98, like kind of turning yellow, basic big button left and right mouse with a big old school rubber wheel that I used to have in school in like the late 90s. I could I had to resist myself laughing at their PC peripherals. <laughs> and I know it's such a small thing to laugh about, but I just found it I found it a little bit funny just because I'm a little bit of a tech snob now. <laughs> and so I, I just found that as a little quirky thing, but it was great regardless. Got in, sent my details, and they gave me bits. So this is when we talk about the bits. So what we did was they gave you a couple of things. What I was given were these two bits. Now, one of these things, this one specifically, I'm not going to show you on screen because that has a lot of my personal information. But effectively, it has your personal info and it has the appointment date of your next vaccine. Now, obviously, where we had it done, they are also organizing when to book you in for your second vaccine. So when they were signing me in, they were also organizing the second appointment whilst I was there. So my second appointment is in the beginning of April, April 8th at 7 o'clock. So you can expect a second update video on the 8th of April, and we'll see how that goes as well. For, uh, a little bit later on down the line, see if anything's changed or updated at all. The other thing they gave you is this, which is a list of useful tips, bits, and information about the vaccine you have got. Specifically, I had the Pfizer vaccination. And like I said earlier in the UK, we currently, at the making of this video, have two in circulation, the Pfizer vaccine and the Oxford one. The Pfizer one is the one that needs to be refrigerated at what, minus 90 degrees? at the majority of the time in order to stay suitable. While the Oxford vaccine is a little bit more, a little bit more uh, loose when it comes to its chilling temperatures. A little bit more like a flu vaccine for the Oxford one rather than what Pfizer have done. So I had the Pfizer vaccine, so this gives me all the information I would need about the Pfizer one if I'm ever interested. And it does have a lot of really interesting information in there. It does say that you will get two injections. It gives you a list of possible side effects. Uh, they include very common, common and even uncommon side effects. The most uncommon side effects being enlarged lymph nodes, which can happen. I can understand that happening, but it says one in a hundred people. So the chance of that happening is still relatively low. Uh, and as far as I'm aware, I know quite a few people that have had it at the moment. Not a single person has a side effect yet, which is really good. And even then, the other uncommon symptom on this which is right here in one of the hundred people, is just feeling unwell. And even even with this, I had a really nice chat with the nurse that did my injection. And she even said, nine times out of 10, the worst symptom you're gonna get when you get any of the vaccines 
is maybe a little pain in the arm that you have your injection in the day after. The worst she's ever seen it, because I actually asked her, the worst side effect she's ever seen or heard from a patient after getting the COVID vaccine was a headache. Literally, that's it. They had a headache. She advised to take paracetamol. They took paracetamol for the day. They actually felt better the next day. But they, take, but they kept taking paracetamol regardless, just to make sure. Brilliant. That's really, really good. Of course, your mileage may vary. <laughs> Do not get me wrong. Uh, there is a chance that a more potent side effect may affect you if you go to have the vaccine. But just know, even then, the symptoms that you may find afterwards are not going to be too bad. They can be controlled. And it is also advised in here that before you go for your vaccine, if at any time you are worried before you go to get your vaccine, talk to your doctor, let them know what you're worried about, and they will advise whether it is best for you to get your vaccine on the date and time that you have it, or whether it's best to delay it, give it a couple of weeks for your symptoms to die down, and then look for an appointment again. They will advise you on that, which is very good. So yeah, we went through the registration process. After the registration process, I would have sat on a waiting chair in order to be called in by a nurse, but one of the nurses was free. So I went straight in, uh, met the nurses that were gonna sort me out. There was one nurse doing the admin, the second nurse was doing the actual injections. She sat me down, asked me to take my jacket off that I had at the time and roll my sleeve up after finding out which arm was better. She asked me some very important questions, such as have I felt ill within the past seven days before getting the vaccine? Obviously not. Have I been on a trial where I could have had this vaccine beforehand? No. Have I ever been a victim of epileptic shocks or anything along those lines? Luckily no. And a couple of other very important questions, which when you go for yours, the medical professional will be asking you as well. So please be honest when you are asked those questions. You may also be asked those questions before your appointment is even booked, but not in every case. So please, if you are worried about your health condition, speak to your health professional. They will advise you. I cannot, I'm not a health professional, but I do work for the NHS. So keep that in mind. I am not here to give medical advice, not at all. And then of course, it's just like I said, went in, got the injection done after saying no to all the, all the questions, checking it out. I was then given a sticker to put on my shirt, which is right here, that gave me the time I could leave the building. Uh, because after that, I had to go to another lady at another desk who just simply crossed me off of a register that she had of people that came in in order to make sure, yep, we've seen him. I sat down on a chair for 15 minutes with my mum, all done, walked out the door, got in the car, and here we are. Now, to talk about my thoughts and feelings going through the process of it, first things first, huge respect for everyone involved, the volunteers, the nurses, the doctors, Fun fact as well, one of the doctors who I work with was the duty doctor there uh, when I had my vaccine done. So that that felt even more reassuring that one of the doctors I work with is still a part of the system. And this is the thing, by when I'm recording this video on the day I have it, I know that the majority of the doctors and nurses that I work with at the surgery have all also been a part of the system already and are planning to do more shifts as the weeks, months come on by. But just to physically see them there is awesome. So you have a friendly face there already. It was also extra awesome because when I had the vaccine and sitting down, there's one of our admin team just right there. And they noticed me because of my voice. <laughs> Which begs the question, am I that annoying at work? <laughs> I'm starting to question. <laughs> or do I talk too much? I, should I interrogate my colleague? I don't know. Needless to say, it was a very respectful experience from beginning to end. I felt safe at every single point. Uh, whenever someone sat on a chair and moved or sat on a chair and went out the building, because of course it was a one in, way out, one way in, one way out system, they were wiping down every single chair as soon as someone's bonds was off it. Brilliant stuff. The volunteers, the professionals, you all did great. And if any of you watched this video, thank you for doing an amazing job. Hope the rest of this evening has gone well and every other evening you're working in the future. And keep it up. You're doing amazing. You absolutely are. Now, apart from that, I actually went out of the building, go into the car and come home. And I just had this constant feeling in my head as if, 
That's it. So leading up to this point, I've been listening to a lot of radio bits and a lot of interviews from other people that have had the vaccine. And they've gotten really emotional because it's it's like as if they've had the vaccine and then it's clocked onto them that this is one of the one of the steps to hopefully getting to the end of this. And they got really emotional because of that, because it's it's a sense of hope, right? Not a sense of false hope anymore, a sense of legitimate hope. And I didn't get that. I think it's because I had a bit of an emotional moment this morning before I went in. Because my big reason for getting the vaccine is so that my family are protected, because of course I live with mum and dad. And with how the rates are going at the moment, the chance of my mum and dad ending up in the hospital is quite high, unless I'm careful. So now, with me having the vaccine, I feel a lot safer with my mum and dad, which is fantastic on my part. On top of that as well, I also really wanted the vaccine, because for those who don't know, my amazing girlfriend Heather, who is amazing in every way, she lives in Wales, while I live in England. And so we have a long distance relationship at the moment, and this, and last year was supposed to be the year we finally fixed the gap. And that's had to move to this year, and hopefully this year we can bridge the gap. Uh, so I haven't seen her, I think I've seen her once in the last year. No, scratch that. It was, I've seen her once since March last year, when the COVID pandemic really kicked off. And then I saw her in September when things alleviated enough for me to see her for a brief moment of time. And then I haven't seen her since. So I'm also having the vaccine in hopes that this is the step forward for me to be able to see my my lover again <laughs> and hopefully get the ball on track. Sorry if that was a bit mushy for people and you weren't expecting that one, but I'd like to keep you on your toes. But yeah, that, that's it. For me, I feel happy that I'm part of the process. I'll be very interested to see how things go with my second appointment in April and you're darn right we're going to make another video on that one. Just to also give you an update on this. Of course, if anything happens in the meantime, involving myself, I'll probably do an update video on the channel just to let you guys know, has anything changed about me? Have I become positive whilst having the vaccine? I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen now, but it's going to be interesting. And I think documenting it is going to be very interesting as well. But I hope you found this interesting. I hope you found the information interesting at that. Of course, if you want to talk about it and talk more about how I felt or any of that, leave your questions down below. If you have enough questions, I might do a mini Q&A about it. Who knows? We, we might even do that. Post your comments below if you're interested. We'll see what happens. And one more time. I know I work for the NHS and I know I've talked a lot about the process. I am not a medical professional. Do not put comments down below about your symptoms, what you're worried about about vaccines and all that jazz. If you're worried about anything involving your symptoms and the vaccine and whether you should or should not be having it, speak to your medical professional. Do not speak to me. You have heard that from my mouth and that's final. I am not here to answer medical issues because I am not medically trained to do so. I hope you understand that. But with that all said, I hope everyone has a fantastic day, evening, afternoon, whenever it is you're watching this video. Have a fantastic time. Do not forget, ladies and gentlemen, that if you have gotten this far, consider subscribing. Hitting that little notification belly bell, you know the one because... Well, not... <laughs> it sounds like it sounds like a woodpecker. What? No, it's, it's, it's a little ding-dong bell. Get that bell so that you get your notifications whenever I go and make a video or upload anything onto the channel. On top of that, also consider following me on Twitch where I live stream every Tuesday, Thursday and Friday over there with a bunch of different games and the challenges for you guys have considered that I try out. And on top of all that, well that's it, really. So, see you guys next time, have a good one, stay explosive and I'll be seeing you next time. Bye guys!